Hey, um, this is Francesca Gennetti of Rutgers University, New Brunswick. Uh, I am waiting for the mapping a musical scholarship session to get started. If I'm doing this correctly, um, I'm just going to maybe turn off the video for a little bit. I can edit this video later and remove the 10 minute lag. Oh. Hello. Hello, hello, everybody. Here's the room. We have a few people here. So oh. sorry about your lag. Oh, yeah. Oh. Um, well, that's life. It's all right. I'm surviving. So how's it going over there? Good so far? It's been great, I think. Yeah. 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 Cool. Yeah, cool. we actually had a lot of people show up and register this morning. So we're either at 50 or just above 50 people. Good. And we got a mystery lunch. We don't know who yeah. it came from. Anyway, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, was I not supposed to say that? <laughs> Maybe it was a gift. It was a gift from someone. It's bizarre. I don't know where Maybe it came the from. Universe. It was the catering company, but we don't know who paid for it essentially. Great. Well, that's nice. Was it your gift, Frankie? <laughs> yeah. I wish I could say that I was that thoughtful, but gosh, no. So it's somebody else. Awesome. That's funny. All right. All right. So, yeah, how are we going to do this? Um, well, I've got the, um, the Google Doc already open for the mapping session, so I was thinking I was just going to plop some links in there as we go along, although, um, oops, first now my computer's frozen. Nope. Okay, we're good. Um, so, uh, yeah, because I have some data that we could download and, uh, and play around with, and I have it, um, public on a server, so you can just like download it straight to your machines. Um, and then I do, I would like us to take a look at CartoDB today, and that is a free, they have a free tier. So um, I guess maybe as a first step, if we could all go to CartoDB.com and set up an account, hopefully that won't take too long. That's it. Okay. Sorry, we're trying to test the volume here. Can you just okay. say something, Frankie? Yeah, um, well, I was just saying about how I was hoping to use CartoDB. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Can you spell that? C A R T O D B. Oh, okay. Let me see if I can get you a link. I'm not sure if you can see this, but. Okay. It is I'm going to hide my image, Frankie, so it's not distracting. Okay. We can hear you and you can hear us. Yes. Okay. I'm going to take notes while you guys are doing this. Oh, okay. Okay, cool. Um, I might switch to a screen share soon so that you can just see what I'm doing. Um, yeah. But the reason why I thought we would use CartoDB is that um, it's, it's a nice online mapping application. They have a fairly generous free tier although they have various paying plans depending on how much data you want to store um, and possibly how many visualizations you want to create based on those, um, those data sets. But the free tier is pretty good for getting started, and they do have some beautiful visualizations. So um, maybe I will just switch to a screen share now. Um, Let's see. Of course, I have so many windows open on my computer, I have to pick. Um, so let's say, all right. Um, so I'm looking in the Mapping and Musical Scholarship Google Doc right now. I'm just going to give you a few examples that I have. Um, and Anna, I'm going to highlight your Teresa Carreño project. Um, so here is Should we all sign up for the Google Hangout or not? No, you're fine. Okay. Yeah. Um, all right. This screen share function is so peculiar here. Um, now I am I guess I'd better get to make sure CartoDB is open. Ah, it just logged me out. Super. One second. Oh, 
it's good that we ended up staying here so that people could change their minds and go to different. Yeah. I think it's good. Yeah. And the link data one is pretty big. Okay. So um, this is what my CartoDB looks like. I already have a couple of data tables in here, but um, this is an example of a data set that we could play around with. Uh, and I heard earlier today, I'm very sorry to have missed out on the, um, that, um, that uh, performance data uh, talk. I don't know if anybody there was able to attend, but um, he was talking about uh, enriching the, the BSO uh, performance database, our data set sounded really cool, but anyway. Actually, Frankie, sorry, you didn't miss out. He didn't show up. Oh, you're kidding. No, um, but we might talk about that in the afternoon, so okay. we can keep notes for you, because we have some other people interested. Yeah, no kidding. It sounded fabulous. Oh, what a shame. Um, but at any rate, this is kind of a, a similar data set that I got off of, like, Open Data France or something like that, some government site, and um, we're actually looking at a... Uh, a visualization of where the um, National Orchestra of uh, Ile de France, so you know Paris, basically Paris region, where they have performed in like the past 15 years or so. Um, so it's, it's a simple point visualization, although I was able to play around with this last night and uh, get a embed of a, a, a Google Street View, although obviously that's the interior of the Concertibon. Um, to appear in a pop-up window, so um, just a, a very small example of what uh, of what you could do with performance data if that's the kind of information you want to visualize. Um, so that's kind of cool. And let me pull back out of that and. Um, but I'll first start just by asking you a few questions. I guess I mean one of the things that you want to think about when you're getting started with a map mapping project is, um, and, and this is where I always do things backwards, but you should first formulate a spatial question, um, some kind of uh, question that you can express geographically about you know, what it is that you're interested in finding out. And that can be pretty simple. Um, for example, in that uh, visualization I just showed you, um, you could be curious about what kinds of French composers a, a professional French orchestra would perform abroad versus um, at home domestically. Or in another case, you could want to know, um, uh, I have another data set that we might look at of Nobel laureates in literature and um, how much they traveled, you know, where they were born versus where they passed away for those of them that are deceased. Or, um, for example, is the, the Nobel Prize Committee for Literature Eurocentric or not? Um, and hint, they, they are, but uh, we <laughs> probably are already. Um, but at any rate, it can be really s simple. Um, and obviously that question, like any research question, will evol evolve as you experiment with the technology, but it does kind of save you time in the end if you, you have something like that in mind. Um, I tend to do things backwards because sometimes I just experiment with techniques for the, the sake of the experimenting with the technique, but you do lose a lot of time that way, so I will just... Mm -hmm. Just warn you about that. Um, could I? Um, I would love to hear from you actually about what kinds of um, what questions you have in your mind. Like, what what are you thinking about exploring? Anybody want to go? Sure. Um, I'm starting a research project. Hi, uh, this is Laura Gale. Uh, I'm starting a research uh, project having to oh. do with. Uh, basically in the area where I grew up in Virginia and uh, there are a number of factors related to that but some of it has to do with uh, jam venues, performance venues, who travel through when and uh, as well as the different um, the different cultural institutions or societal institutions, everything from churches to workplaces mm -hmm. and so um, yeah I mean I realize that's a real small Place, relatively speaking, but I wanted to play around with visualization to see how much the geography tied into that. That sounds great. Good. Um, it sounds like you might be creating a lot of that data, although there might be a possibility that there's some kind of state of Virginia open data um, 
portal right. where you could grab some cultural data sets like that. So yeah. that was what we're looking into. I don't know how much of the census data might be relative to pull in. It all depends on how it's split out. If I can map it to certain zones within, yeah, that kind of stuff. Yeah. You can download um, shape files from uh, a site called AmericanFactFinder.com okay. for the state of Virginia. So, um, do, do you know what I mean when I'm talking about shape files, or should I explain that? Please explain that. Okay, I will. Um, a shape file is a proprietary file format that was created by Esri. Uh, Esri is the maker of ArcGIS, which is kind of the, um, the industry standard for um, GIS or geographic information systems. Um, and but fortunately, you can use shape files in other map mapping applications. You can use them in CartoDB, for example. So. Um, Sorry, could you spell that? Shape, shape. I, I couldn't quite get that. Yeah, yeah. It's shape, as in like you know, square, round, hexagon. Yeah. Thank you. Um, so it's one word. Shape file. Okay, great. Thank you. Let me see if I can go into that Google Doc and make sure that you um, have American. I've, I've pulled that up. Thank you. American Fact Finder. Okay, yeah. So that way you could actually download the, the geometries of the state of Virginia and you can choose whatever level of granularity you would want. So it could be counties, it could be um, census tracts, so on and so forth. Um, uh, I think the, the smallest uh, geography that the census tracts is the census block and that can literally be like a few city blocks. Um, Probably to get started, you might start with counties to see yes. if that would be good enough. Excellent. Thank you. Yeah. And then how you actually get your data into the county is a, another story. That would probably involve what's called a, a, a table join, um, which is um, or actually a spatial join. Sometimes I get them confused. That's more of an advanced topic, but I will be able to share a tutorial with, <laughs> with you if you want to figure that out. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> um, anybody else have something in mind that they want to, like a research question? I didn't know I was going to be able to come to this, so no, I'm going to oh. just go along. Okay, no, that's this, totally this fine. Is, this is Peggy, Peggy that, uh, from DU. Mm -hmm. okay. I was helping with the planning. Yeah, yeah. thank <laughs> you. I think most people are just curious and, and kind of want a basic intro to how to do visualization with uh, Carto DB or some other tool. Got it. Okay. Fabulous. Yeah, um, I guess uh, it's John. It's John. Um, uh, hey. Uh, yeah, I guess I am uh, interested in that you know, just basic introduction and um, you know maybe some ideas of some of the things you can do with these tools as they relate to music or you know music history, like like you just shown. So that's basically what, what I'm interested in. Yeah. 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 Um, well, in that case, we, I, we haven't actually got that much time, so I suppose I'd better plow forward. Um, I guess one of the, the bigger hurdles when you're starting a mapping project is, uh, is uh, the process of geocoding data. Um, and what geocoding means, basically, is you're taking a, a physical location, you know, like uh, if I were to choose where I work, that's, you know, 169 College Avenue in New Brunswick, New Jersey. Um, how do I get that point on a map? Um, there are some mapping applications that will allow you to just drop pins, um, like um, Google Google, Ma bleh, Google Maps. There's actually a, a separate uh, application called Google My Maps when you want to make your own digital map. Um, that's one that will allow you to drop pins. Another one is History Pin, but um, those are kind of on the more lightweight. End, and they don't give you a whole lot of flexibility in terms of visualizing your data. Um, and so you'll soon discover that in order to have maximal flexibility, you need to learn how to get that data geocoded. So you need basically latitude and longitude coordinates for your physical addresses. Um, and there are fortunately a lot of ways to do that. Um, if you are, if your project is more like on the industrial scale, you might actually have to pay somebody to a geocoding service to do it for you. Um, I've never reached that stage though, and the methods that I've used are all free. Um, CartoDB actually gives you free, uh, 100 free geocodes per month, 
with the basic plan, which is not bad. Um, so you don't even have to do anything else. You can just geocode your, your physical addresses within the CartoDB um, data table interface. Um, you may start to get greedy, though, uh, and want more than 100 geocodes a month, um, in which case uh, I have extensively used a Google app script that uh, will query the, um, the MapQuest API for you and, and get latitude and longitude coordinates for your physical addresses. I know that Anna has had success using the, the Ruby geocoder package, which also looks incredible. Mm -hmm. I haven't used that one. Um, the one caveat about the Ruby geocoder is that it's a command line interface. So if you're not super comfortable with command line work, you might leave that for later. Um, that's why the, the Google app script that I use is, is really great, I think. Um, and, and I didn't write it. I just want to <laughs> put that out there. Um, uh, it it's, was a, written by some, uh, one of the developers at Mapbox. And Mapbox is another online mapping application. So in the, the Google Doc, I just, I actually recently led a, a tutorial on mapping for undergraduates. And I actually go through the process of showing them how to integrate the Google app script into a Google spreadsheet. Um, I'm, I'm not going to go into that uh, right now just because we're, we're short on time, but I pasted it into the Google Doc, so you can actually you can follow through on your own, and it's really easy, and you can stay perfectly within your graphical user interface. And the on only interaction with code that you have is copying and pasting somebody else's code, so um, it's pretty easy. I've had good success using that technique with, with undergraduate students, and, um, and it works you know, obviously, faculty and librarians are, are good at, at picking it up as well. But um, I am going to suggest that we start with downloading some data. So why don't I'm going to post a, a a link to um, a data set in? Are you guys uh, in the Google Doc, or or should I be pasting these links somewhere else? Remember the notes that I showed, the documents where you can take notes? Yes, there. I see it. Yeah, if you go in there, um, that's where she has the links. And if someone wants to like, type in there, since okay. my laptop is yeah. being used for. Yeah, I've got some <laughs> typed in. I can, comment, I can copy that. Okay, so and far. I can add later, too. Sure. So we're good. Okay, Frankie. <laughs> All right. Just typing a few things in there as well. Um, yes, yes. File on using Google Apps script for geocoding. All right. Um, Not sure if you guys can see this, but I'm asking you to download this data set of um, Nobel laureates. Um, it's a CSV file. Yeah. It. It. Yeah. Yeah. Why? What happened? Oh, I double clicked instead of saving. Like. Yeah. Oh, it's okay. Yeah, you can actually look at it in your browser. Yeah, it was pretty entertaining. Yeah. <laughs> it was the laureates data set. It. Let's see. It's the laureates. Data Yeah, so okay. these are the, um, all of the recipients of the Nobel um, Prize for Literature. Um, I'm going to try to do a screen share in a, a minute. So let's see. I need to get into my tables interface with CartoDB. I'm going to share that right now. Um, OK. So um, when you first, uh, I'm not even sure what it looks like when you first create a, an account in CartoDB, but um, we need to get you guys to the tables uh, window, which should look a little bit like this. Can you guys see this? Mm -hmm. Yes. OK. I've used CartoDB. 
So I already have a, a bunch of tables in there, and I'm on the free plan, so it's made so for them. And then pull it in. Yeah. Or, uh, so where's your table right now? It's in your Google? Or? No, I, um, you saved it? I saved it on the desktop, so I can just pull it in from there. Yeah. yeah, saving it on your desktop is a good right. idea. There you go. Oh, save it? OK. Yeah, you would be able to right-click and save, someplace where you can find it again. And then you just basically upload it to CartoDB. Yeah, there you go. Let's say guessing geocoding. Yeah, it tries to find your your geometries. Mm -hmm. It will not. It will not be able to in this case. Download. There you go. That's it. Okay. How are you doing over there? Ah, okay, yes. Yes, you, you've moved over to another side of your table, which is why I was thinking it's not matching up, but I see it. No problem for me. So this is what, yeah, this is what the laureates table looks like after I've imported it into CartoDB. In the folder? Okay. Well, what's it? Anna's helping this someone is, else This is the tricky thing with Using it on an iPad. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I can follow along. Oh, shoot. Um, yeah, this, I wonder if, I haven't tried this out on an iPad. Yeah, sometimes it doesn't. Yeah. I'll follow along. You want to just, I guess, look oh, over yeah, okay. Laura's shoulder? Sorry. Are you still <laughs> working on your phone? Uh, no, I haven't okay. even tried it. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Watch the screen share. <laughs> yeah, sorry guys. Um, so it, it tried to guess where my geometries were and mm -hmm. it did not succeed. You can see that it created this column saying the geom and it has null, 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 null. So um, yeah. it just does not know uh, that I have location information in here. Um, and that's because it's uh, these are still physical locations, they're not um, latitude and longitude coordinates. Um, and we are going to take advantage of the free geocodes available to us through um, CartoDB to actually geocode this right now. Hey, and Frankie. I'm, yeah? Sorry to bother you. Is there any way you can um, zoom your zoom into your page that you're showing us right now, maybe to like 125% because it's a little small? Okay. Just so that way we can see it better for those of us who aren't using our own data. Right. Um, I... Yeah. yeah, that's good. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Um, so I'll just scroll through. A CartoDB automatically assigns a unique identifier to every row in your data. Um, and incidentally, when you're preparing your own data set, uh, you know, CartoDB does this automatically, but it might be a good idea to actually think of creating a unique ID for every little um, row of data that you have. Um, and then, uh, you know, you see that we've got the first name and last name, you know, Alice Monroe, yada, yada. She was born in 1931, and she's still living. So that's why died has 000. zero, zero. Um, and uh, for, for the purposes of this exercise, we're going to focus on where they were born as opposed to where they passed away, just because you can see we've got a lot of blanks. Some of these people are living, um, and there will be more information for us to visualize if we just focus on, on where they're born. So um, the way you would georef or rather geocode in CartoDB is to basically select one of those columns where you have the physical locations. So I'm going to select Born City, and you can see that I get a, a pop-up menu with some, some options here. And one of them is to, actually they call it georeference, as opposed to geocode. Um, it's mm -hmm. basically the same thing, although georeferencing is usually used in the context of um, what are called raster files. Um, and raster files are... Um, it's basically a grid of pixels, and you would need a raster if you needed to import a historical map, like a big scan of a historical map, or um, or some kind of imagery uh, plans, architectural plans, that sort of thing. Anyway, um, that's a bit of a, a digression, but at any rate, they use georeference um, and geocoding interchangeably. But anyway, so I'm going to go ahead and click, and now 
we get these various options for georeferencing. It first it first asks me, do you have longitude and latitude? I don't. So um, I do, however, have city names. So I'm going to click on that option. And then it just asks me, where are your city names stored? So this is when it, it helps to familiarize your, yourself with the data set. Um, I may be going a little bit fast just because I know this data, but tell me to stop if it's if I'm going too fast. But um, we know that that information is stored in, in Born City, so I'm going to go ahead and select that. And then country where the city is located, if known, and we have that as well, and that is Born Country. And then you press continue. And now it has sensed that my data is a point data, which is to say it's a... Um, well, it's a point. It's it's one location on a on a map as opposed to a shape or a line. Uh, so I'm going to press continue again, and you can see that I get this little window saying geocoding and finishing, and then it says 65 out of 106 rows were successfully turned into points. So it's giving me this warning that um, my geocoding job wasn't entirely successful. Uh, and I just want to spend a little bit on, of time on why that happened. Um, so we can take a quick look at the map view, and you can actually see that we have some points on the map already, which is awesome. So uh, we do have something to play around with, even if we weren't 100% successful. But I'm going to click back at that data view, just so that we can get a sense of what went wrong here. Um, and um, I can see the first problem with Doris Lessing. Um, does anybody, can anybody get me what that problem is? Persia and Iran? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. There's, so, there's also the one for Romania where it, it may be that the city and region are in the same <clears throat> cell and it can't split that up. That's also a good point, um, and that's something that I wanted to highlight to you, and I forgot. Um, but when you're preparing your own data, you do want to make sure that you isolate each part of the location in a separate column, because that will improve the accuracy of the geocoding service. Um, and in this case, you're right. That thing with an N that I can't even pronounce, that is a city. Um, Banet is the, um, the region or the department. Um, and so, yeah, I got a little confused there. So um, just FYI, when you are preparing your data, it's nice to have it all neatly delimited in, in columns to improve the, the accuracy of these things. Um, and so yeah, to get back to um, Doris Lessing up there, where the heck is she? Um, there she is. So we have some historical data here. Um, a lot of these people were born in countries that no longer exist. We've got some great ones. We've got the free city of Dancy. <laughs> <laughs> um, lots of other ones, USSR, of course, um, Austria-Hungary. Um, so could I have any, does anybody want to take a stab at what I would need to do in order to fix this problem? Um, my, my guess is that you would have to create another column for state or region and then basically do sort of a find replace macro kind of thing for your table. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly right. Um, that would be my suggestion to um, create a separate column with the, the current location information and actually keep the, the historical data just because you, you would want to use that because it's mm -hmm. accurate. You know, at the time that this author was born, it was called Austria-Hungary. Mm -hmm. uh, and then you might actually be able to reuse it in the, the labels. So when you're creating that visualization, you could create like a, a click or a hover effect, and you could see that they were born in Prague, Austria, Hungary. Um, and um, it's, yeah, so just for accuracy and, um, and for also to help your, your readers, your users, trace back this information and um, use it in the most, uh, you know, use your data reliably. It, it helps to keep that historical data alongside with the more um, current location data, which you have to have in order for the geolocation service to work appropriately. Um, so anyway, just a, a side note on historical data. Um, why don't we hop on over to the map view? 
Uh, we're, we're not. We're going to leave those other laureates behind. So. <laughs> That's a um, a problem that we can solve in a a bit. I actually have the the data appropriately geo coded. Um, oh, I guess I didn't grab that URL, but I ha I created a separate data set called Places that has all of the accurate URLs. Let's see if I can get to that quickly. Um, places CSV. All right, I'm just going to dump this quickly in the Google Drop, the Google Doc. Okay. Okay. So I, I gave you a link. It's just in the exact same. Um, directory. Um, it's called Places CSV. You can go ahead and, and download that. Um, but at any rate, so we're going to take a look at our slightly um, slightly incomplete data and just have a more of a look at what we can do with CartoDB. Um, can you all see the the map view? Yes. 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 Okay. Good. Just wanted to check. Um, so this is um, this is kind of an opportunity where you can start asking some questions, but of course you you'll see that we have these dots, but we don't know anything about the dots. So that would probably be the first thing I would fix, and you can do that by going to the info window. It's that little cartoon bubble, um, and I am always a fan of hover effects, so I am going to choose first name and surname or last name for the, um, the hover. Uh, so basically what that does is now when I, I hover over that spot, um, I get the, the first name and the, the last name of the author. And I can get rid of that metadata if I want, and I usually tend to just because it's less interesting to the user than it is to me. So um, And now I've just got Alfreda Jelinek, uh, Herman Hess, so on and so forth. Um, so that's a quick, whoops, that's a quick fix. Um, I could also do a click effect that's entirely different. Um, so we did first and last name for the hover. Um, we might do born city and born country for the click. So now um, when I click on this, I get Budapest, Hungary. Um, so that I know exactly where that is. Um, now I might want to show you... Oh, there's one other thing. That, um, CartoDB gives you a bunch of base maps that you can choose from. And the, the base map is basically that, um, that background you're seeing. It defaults to this Positron base map, which is you know, pretty basic, um, but there are many others, as you can see. So um, I love the, the stamen toner maps. Those are pretty striking. Mm. Um, also, the no good day is solid. Anyway, you can choose your own. They also have this watercolor one, which I think is wild. Yeah. <laughs> so pretty fun. I'm just going to choose one at random. Um, and now I would like to show you the visualization wizard. Uh, so the default is to choose this simple visualization just with the, um, the points, which is great. Um, but this is kind of, <coughs> through the visualization wizard, this is one area where you can start um, asking questions of your data. So a really simple one is just the category. Um, and it, it defaulted to the ID column, which is the unique identifier, and that's kind of useless just because obviously they're all unique. <laughs> but um, something that might be a little bit more um, meaningful would be gender. So, um, and it automatically chose um, this, these shades of blue, which is a little bit hard to read. I might choose another one for the guys. Let's make the guys Republicans. <laughs> <laughs> the women Democrats. Oh, just kidding. Anyway, um, but um, this way you can actually see very clearly that 
uh, obviously most of the laureates are, are men. Um, so that's a quick... Mm. Quick. Can, can you go back to that that bigger view that you were, you had, so you could see the United States? Oh yeah, sorry about that. You have um some. So I thought that an American woman won the Nobel. She probably did. It might have been one of the people that we lost due to a coding error. Oh, are you thinking of Doris Lessing? No, I was thinking of um, like Maya Angelou or something. I'll look. Yeah, I have the I have the little I can't look at it. Uh, uh, download the data, but I can look at the spreadsheet. Anyway, go ahead. It helps to. Um, of course, it's hard in this table view to figure out who that might be. I know that there are lots of Tony Morrison. Tony Morrison, you're right. Uh -huh. Did get lost, and I don't know why. Uh -huh. It says USA. Do you think that's the problem? Tony Morrison, what went wrong with you? Oh, Lorraine, Ohio. Yeah, I oh. think it's because it has the city. Because I mean, it has the state. It has the state. state. Yeah, so that's probably the reason why. Um, that's too bad because that's. I've used other geocoding services where they're they're able to sort that out. But anyway, obviously CartoDB couldn't quite hack it. Um, so yeah, that would be a an instance where you would need to separate the state into a separate. Um, column. Um, and there is actually there are a bunch of visualizations that you can s see and experiment with. Um, another simple one is just the cluster. Uh, and it's basically a bubble visualization. You can s see more clearly when you have a bunch of points clustered in one spot. Um, what you know? What's going on? You know, because sometimes if you have too many points, your your map isn't readable anymore, and so you might need to move to a, a cluster visualization. Um, another one that's kind of fun is the torque visualization, and this is actually an animation. Um, I'll just show it to you quickly. It's maybe not the most logical choice for this data set, just because there isn't really that much to animate, <laughs> but. Um, Oh, and actually, I have to go back to the data set before we do this. So um, let me just turn this off. I'm going to go back to category. Um, so th I was thinking of using the um, torque animation because we do have some years here. Um, I actually want to go to the column that's called year. And this refers to the year of their award. And you can see that CartoDB has assumed that this is a string, that this is the data type. And a string is probably the most unrestricted data type. It's typically what you use to describe words, you know, alphanumerical strings. Um, but in this case, it's not quite accurate um, to call this a string. This is a, a date. So I'm going to go ahead and, and change that to date. And it wants to make sure that I'm sure. And I say yes. And um, then I scroll back and have a look. And you can see that it has converted the year into this format that's machine readable. So now I'm going to go back to the map and I'm going to open up my visualization wizard and I'll go back to torque and it, defa it defaulted to this CartoDB ID which is not very meaningful so I'm going to choose a year this time and close out of that. And, and this way, you can actually see the little awards popping off over the continent of Europe, mostly. <laughs> um, some in North America and, and Asia. And then very, very much towards the end, you see Africa light up a little bit, and Latin America. Yeah. Um, I always wondered how to create those. Yeah. Yeah, so this is one way. Um, I've seen this use, the torque visualization used much more successfully with like Twitter data or like earthquake data. Um, and obviously that's like an ideal use case just because you can see like all of these little bursts. Um, like so could you, because um, my house just shook. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so um, we have a data visualization uh, for faculty, not for students, which is why I'm, I'm pleased that you did. But what um, they did is they did when uh, embassies opened and closed, 
around the world from you know so that you could see when you, you know how long certain embassies. But they would have many uh, little points of light or whatever show up. So would this be able to do? If you had like 20 people who got the award in one year, would you be able to see all that? Um, let's see. So do one at a time, but if you had, if you had a different. Like, yeah, there's actually there's one more thing that I should probably show you about the torque visualization. You know, again, this isn't the ideal data set for it, just because you can only have one Nobel laureate per oh, year. Okay, okay, <laughs> that, that actually answers my question. Yeah. But there's one more little. Um, facet here that I didn't um, explore and it may help you visualize what you're talking about and that's this first one that's called cumulative and this is more this makes more sense with like earthquake data or um, Twitter data but basically the, those little bursts never go away so um, you get like uh, oh and the marker stroke looks a little bit too wide there I'm gonna actually go to the back to the visualization wizard and um, you can choose the, the color, obviously, the marker fill. And then there's something that's called the marker stroke. And that's that little white line around the, the dots, which I'm not a fan of. So I'm going to take it down a little bit um, to 0.5. So you could get rid of it altogether, actually. So this way it looks like somebody's kind of shooting holes in the map. But <laughs> anyway. Um, so that may be, uh, that might be what you would need for your um, visualization. I'm not quite sure, but it's another. Yeah, that, that, that might, and then it would, you know, go, it, it would go away. It, it, that's a very complicated one, the one I'm, I'm talking about, but I was just curious. Yeah, um, it helps to experiment, I guess, with all of the, the wizards in, in CartoDB. You can lose a lot of time that way, obviously, but it can take time figuring out the most readable visualization for your data. Um, Would it be that torque heat or heat map one? Oh yeah, where is the heat map one? Torque heat. I've not used this one before. Ha! Huh. But actually, it, it does show you how Eurocentric the. the <laughs> the committee is, and there's this big hot blob over Europe, and then the rest of the continents are kind of cool. Um, you might be able to see this better with, like, a black um, oh, big cool. map. Yeah. Cool. So that's another option. Um, we have a little bit of time. I could... We could either move to a different data set, or I could show you how to fix the problem with those locations that didn't geocode earlier, or um, any other requests. I guess I'd like to know how to fix that data. Yeah, OK. Good enough. So why don't we go back to our data view. Um, why don't you go ahead and go all the way back to tables and okay. import that places CSV file that I shared with you. Okay. I've got that. Okay. I've got mine already here. So um, basically what you've got in the places CSV is every city and country that's mentioned in that laureates data set, um, but it's without the names of the laureates. It's just the locations and their latitude and longitude. Um, and it's also where they were born and where they died. So um, it's all just together there. Um, so basically what we would do is we would go back to that laureates data that was so pro problematic that geocoded partly, but not all the way. Um, okay. And um, now I'm going to do what is called a table merge. So basically I'm going to use what is um, shared between these two tables. And that is going to be the 
it, it's fairly arbitrary, but I'm going to choose the, the Born City column just because I have Born City and Laureates. And then if I go back and look at my places data, I have this column that's called the city. And okay. although it's sorted alphabetically, it's the exact same thing. So I left all of that historical data, Benin, now Kronik, or however you pronounce it, Anna would know. Um, and bear with me, I'm going to go right back to laureates. So now that I know which column it is that's in common in both tables, I'm going to edit this and choose the option to merge with table. And now it's going to ask me if I want to do a column join or a spatial join. And um, a spatial join is more what, um, Laura, I think you would need in order to get uh, to like count up the number of performances within a county in, in Virginia. Um, we're not going to do that. <laughs> we're going to do yeah. a column join. Um, so now we're going to click next. And I want basically all of the, um, the data fields in my laureates data, but I'm only going to match it with one column in my places data table. And that column is going to be city. So I, rather than merge all columns, I need to just select city. Okay. I tested it and I messed up, so I'm going to go back and double check. <laughs> <laughs> That's the fun. It is a lot of the fun. Trust me, I've spent many hours on this, so um, it requires experimentation. Um, and unfortunately, I can't see my continue button because I think my screen is so large, so I'm going to take this down a little bit. Yeah. Um, so now I'm going to merge tables and see if it works for me. So it, And then it wants to, me to name my merge table, and Laureate's merge is fine. Oh, mine didn't work either. How, how amusing, though, but I did get the latitude and longitude coordinates. Ah, uh, no, I just... When I tried it, I had a bunch of uh, null ones, but um, a bunch of null rows earlier. Now I have some, but not as many. Peculiar. Let me try the map view and see. Yeah, I'll try the map view. Okay, I've got dots. That dots are good. Yeah, dots are encouraging. Um, my concern, however, is to be able to visualize. Oh yeah, so that we know, because the names, the names of the laureates, that's in the laureates table. But the the correct latitude and longitude coordinates, that's in the um, places table. Um, and my concern was to be able to reuse the data fields in the laureates table. And even if my table looked kind of funky, it looks like I should be able to get everybody's name. So I'm going to try a quick click effect in the info window and see if I've got this right. So, ah, and that did not work. Yeah, I made a mistake too. So, bummer. Um, I did this correctly yesterday. <laughs> um, and I, I will show you quickly just to prove to you that I can do this. Um, maybe I can figure out which way it went. But so this is with the corrected um, location information. And you can see that um, we've got Alice Monroe in Canada. And Toni Morrison is, in fact, there. And we also have Pearl Buck. So the, the ladies are back. Um, and now I just have to figure out where I went wrong. But at any rate, it looks like we're kind of getting out of time. <laughs> if I figure out my what I did yesterday, you have an I'll... hour, Frankie. You have an hour. I have another hour. Oh wait, it's two thirty. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm confusing myself with a uh, yeah. I mean, if you guys want to stay, we can continue. But if you want to switch, we can stop. So let's ask you guys. <laughs> It's up to you. I have plenty of stuff I could share, but I understand if you want to keep going. Hey, I got names. That's Yay. good. Yay! Well, 
more, I'd be happy to, to keep working with you on it today. That would be to. awesome if yeah. you don't mind. Yeah. <laughs> this is something I don't know anything about, but I just want to learn. Yeah, it, it requires it requires practice, but it is a lot of fun. Okay. You're not gonna do yours so I will, unless I don't know if you guys want to stay in here to continue with Frankie or if you wanna end. It's up to you. We did schedule it for an hour, I'm sorry. I was in my head I was thinking pre planned sessions, two hours. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I don't want to compete with anything else you guys have got planned, so um, just yeah, go ahead. Let me know. I could go either way. Could you tell us a little bit about, say, your favorite mapping thing that you've done? Oh, my favorite mapping thing that I've done. Um, you feel a bit inspired by. <laughs> Yeah, it's very funny just because I've taught mapping before, but I haven't yet found a solid application for it in my own research. So in that regard, Anna is probably a better uh, case study than I am. Uh, I guess yeah. the funny thing is is that I refuse to pay for any of these services, and so while I've done some neat things in cartoon, to DB, I deleted them so that I would have room to be able to uh, uh, <laughs> to show things. I mean, I can show you a bunch of sites that I find inspiring that are um, that were not done by me, um, just to kind of give you a flavor of what is out there. I'm actually going to just do a big copy paste now. Great, and Thank you. put this into the Google Docs. Okay. Um, so that we can explore them that would yeah. Be later. Yeah, thank you. Appreciate that. Okay. I'm just going to put this under sample projects. So I've already got Anna's Teresa Codinho project, and um, here are some others. So um, they can get very complex. I'll just show you one example quickly. Um, uh, I'll do a screen share in a bit. Some of you may actually know this project. It's called the Yale Photogrammer. I don't know it. Um, hold on a second. I'll do a screen share now. Okay. So I just love this just because you, you'll notice that they are using a CartoDB interface, which is pretty cool. Um, but they have connected it to this pretty robust database of um, photographic images. So um, what you're seeing right now is this vector layer of counties. And they're using the shaded, um, uh, I forget what it's called. It's like the shaded visualization. So the, the darker the color, the more whatever is there. So in this case, the more photos. So um, like I can click on this county, and it says Coconino, Arizona, Arizona, and there are 39 pictures. And then I can click and um, oops, can you guys still see this? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 And then see all of the images that they have geocoded for that county in Arizona. And these are actually from the Library of Congress. So um, the Photogrammer is a great, great project for libraries. Um, it was actually worked on by the Digital Humanities Librarian at Yale, um, Peter Leonard, in, in collaboration with some like a student and somebody else in some other academic department. But at any rate, um, this is actually a, a library collaboration. Uh, and the interesting thing about it is that it's also a pretty good illustration of the difference between so-called raster and vector data. So, um, and does anybody know what I'm talking about when I say vector data? I would love for you to explain it. I've seen the terms, but I don't quite get it. Yeah. Um, a vector file is basically a, a file of relationships between objects, so it's it's distances, radiuses, all of that sort of thing. Um, it's basically just math, and, and this layer of counties that we're looking at, that is actually a, a vector uh, layer. The wonderful thing about vectors is that you can keep scrolling, and then it will kind of 
you see how it's got itself into focus? Yes. Uh, and you can just keep on doing it, and it just it keeps sort of recalculating based on the size of your screen. So that's kind of the magic of vectors. It, it's yes. infinitely scalable. Um, just because it will just recalculate those distances for the optimal display on your screen. Um, the difference with rasters, and I'm going to now include that 1970, 1937 VECO motor map behind it, and that is actually a raster file. It's a scan of a historical map. Okay. You can see how a raster is just a grid of pixels, just because when I'm at this level of zoom, it has started to pixelate. Right. And there's nothing much you can do about that when you want to work with a historical map. Uh, just because you can't turn a raster into a vector, it, it has to stay a raster. Um, mm -hmm. So that's just um, that's just the way it goes. And of course, you don't want that. I mean, you obviously that that map is probably a huge TIF mm -hmm. file or something like that. But you don't want it be, to be too huge because then it impacts the speed with which a browser can load the website. <laughs> <laughs> so you don't want people like clicking on your URL and then having the site take two minutes to load just because everybody would lose patience with it. So um, that's kind of the delicate balance that you have to strike with um, with rasters. So it's basically an overlay that helps contextualize the the data. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. And a good reason for using a, a raster file is when um, I'm, I'm going over at this point. You guys might want to move on. But um, for instance, like I had a faculty member approach me, and he wanted to map locations in Naples, Italy, that actually no longer exist. Um, they were there in the 19th century, but they're not there anymore. Yeah. So, uh, we're actually looking into how he would create this overlay of a historical map so that he can map those locations, but then underneath you would see like a Google satellite image or something like that, and that's the, the, the vector that you use for the context. Cool. I think someone in our map collection just did something similar with World War I trenches. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Mapping the trench, wow. the trench, the entire trench system yes. over. Wow, because that's what I was wow. wondering: is is can it be something other than um, points on the, on a, a map? Can it be um, that borders? Oh, of course, yeah. Oh. Um. <laughs> can, I'm talking to you now, <laughs> so it can be borders that um, the data. So yeah. borders. The, the the three types of vector that you would encounter are points, lines, and what are called polygons or shapes. Okay. So um, these counties, for example, those are shapes because the two ends of the line are, are joined. Um, and this is an example of something that you could easily download from American Fact Finder. So shapes, lines, and uh, points. Mm -hmm. And uh, creating points, that's something that we, we just looked at doing. That's, that's pretty easy to, to geocode points. Um, it's a little bit beyond me how you would create lines and shapes, at least at scale. Uh, there are a couple of mapping applications that will allow you to actually draw on the, they have an interface tool for drawing. But um, otherwise, uh, there is for generating lines and polygons, but I don't know what it is. <laughs> That's kind of beyond me. Well, that was great. Thank you. Yes, thank you yeah, so thank much. Thank you very much. Oh, my pleasure, guys. Thank you so much for coming. <laughs> heal quickly. Yes. Thank you, Frankie. Yes, heal. yes thank you. Guys, have fun. Enjoy the rest of your day. Oh. Thanks. All right. I'm such a geek. I love you. Yes. Bye. 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 Bye.